video, we're going to keep on sending until God comes. You know, because my best day, I sin about 20,000 times. Don't listen to those people that say you can't be perfect because they're trying to make you into a bastard. Because my father told me in the book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 48, be ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Let them listen to their father. Because he's a liar from the beginning and a murderer. And if you listen to them, they going to kill you too. I'm serious. This is the truth, brothers and sisters. This is the truth that's been a long time coming. It's time to prepare the way of the Lord. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling out of strongholds. What strongholds are these? The strongholds that the devil has been establishing in our life some, since the day that we have been born on this sin-infested planet. He's been teaching us the customs of sin and making us believe it's okay to do some things that are wrong. And we've been so fully indoctrinated into these things that we can't see clear. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're mighty through God through the pulling down of those strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every I think that exalted itself. Because my God has power all wise, all knowing. What man can tell me something different from what he has left in his word? He's the one that made you, not Dr. Such and Know Nothing. Don't let them spoil you through their vain philosophies after the rudiments of this world and not after the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. Are you with me? Yes. So we got to be clothed. Because we need to get rid of this sin. Amen? Amen. Let's go back to Revelation 7 <coughs> verse 1. And it says, They're now clothed with the sun. Now who's this sun? Or what is this sun? Revelation chapter 1 and verse 16 says, And in his right hand was seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance shining as the sun. Excuse me. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Come on, brothers and sisters. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 16. Let's read it together. In his right hand, and out of his mouth went a, and his countenance shining, and his strength. And we're talking about none other than Christ Jesus. Are you with me? And then in the book of Malachi, Malachi chapter 4. Malachi, the fourth chapter, and verse 2. The word of God says, Unto them that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Now there we see the Son of Righteousness. Now is this no Christ Jesus we're talking about? Because we see that the Son, that, the, that Christ Jesus, his countenance shines as the sun shineth in its strength. But here it says the son of righteousness. So we have to clarify everything. Remember, I said, you got to check everything against the word of God. Part truth and not all truth is no truth. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So let's find out if Christ is the son of righteousness. Turn the Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, matter of fact, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, chapter 1. Oh, I had it right the first time. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And verse 30. Verse 13. 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. And it says, But if him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto you wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. So clearly, in Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2, we are looking at the Son of Righteousness, Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. But let's look at that text for a minute in Malachi 4 and verse 2. 
Malachi 4 and verse 2. Because there's something very interesting about that text. It says, but unto them that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Who does the Son of Righteousness arise unto? Those that fear my name. Now, who is this speaking? Is this Christ speaking? This is the Father speaking. But unto them that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise. Are you with me? With healing in his wings. But what does it mean to fear God's name? Okay, in the book of Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 8 and verse 13. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. It says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth, do I hate? So we know clearly in all summary, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Amen? Amen. Then in Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10, we are told, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right? So we got the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the fear of the Lord is to also to hate evil. But still, we need to figure out what it means to fear God's name. Are you with me? What is his name? So that you're fearing it. See, God wants us to worship him intellectually as well as spiritually. Because to receive the seal of God, you must be both intellectually and spiritually settled into his truth. So what is the name of God or the name of the Lord? Turn your Bibles to the book of Exodus. Exodus, the 34th chapter. Exodus, the 34th chapter. And we'll be starting at verse 5. Exodus, the 34th chapter. And we'll be starting at verse 5. And it says there, And the Lord descended in a cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and said, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth, having mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, excuse me, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sins, and that will by no means clear the guilty, and visiting the iniquity upon the fathers, upon the children, of, and visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children, unto the third and fourth generation. So when it says here the name of the Lord, we're not just talking about Jehovah or Jah. We're talking about character, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth. Amen. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Yes. And notice, in verse 6 it goes on to say, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that ate me. Now, if you are commandment keepers, like we say we are, then we should be able to easily identify the fact that that part of God's character right there, that characteristic trait, is found within the second commandment in the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 5. <clears throat> and we are told in James chapter 2 and verse 10, for if any man does what? If any man keep... Come on, brothers and sisters. James... One point. For if any man keep the whole law, yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Therefore, it is also true that if you mention one of the laws of God, you are mentioning them all, for they are interlocked. So when God mentioned that part of his character, he is saying that his character is contained within his Ten Commandments. And that he is the God of the Ten Commandments. Amen. 